Hello everyone, my name is Salman Al Gamal, and uh, I'm happy to present to you our poster for our uh, paper by the title of Arabic Diacritics in the Wild, Exploiting Opportunities for Improved Diacritization. This work was done in collaboration with Osama Obeid, Tamim Kabani, Go In Away, and Nuzar Habash. So first we want to answer the question of what are Arabic diacritics? So as a lot of you probably already know, Arabic is a language that is written in Arabic script from right to left, and uh, there's an example of it here to our right. These are two words, and if you look at the letters, you'll find that some of the letters have uh, marks uh, that are marked in red on top or below the letters. These marks are called diacritics, and Arabic has a huge inflection phase of diacritics, but we're going to only focus on nine most common diacritics that are used in modern standard Arabic. These are the ones listed in the table to the left. So the first three, Fathad al are the short vowelization diacritics. So they make the sound a o e. And then comes the nonation ones, which also append it with the n sound. So it's an on in. And then shedda is a doubling of the letter. Sukun marks that this letter has no short, no vowelization at all. Dagger is actually the only long vowelization that critic in this list. So it's it makes the a uh sound, the long a uh sound. And these diacritics can come in clusters. So multiple diacritics can come in a single letter, but however, they do have to follow some specific rules. For example, nonations cannot come with short vowel diacritics. Uh, multiple nonations cannot come on the same, on the same, uh, in the same cluster and so on and so forth. So, uh, however, if you look at text that is written by and for um, uh, proficient Arabic speakers, you'll find that they rarely ever use diacritics because proficient Arabic speakers can on the go, predict the diacritics on every single letter without having them to be written. And uh, however, even though this is the case, you'd still find occasional diacritics here and there in text like this. And therefore, in this paper, uh, we're gonna we're gonna study this kind of diacritics, the, the, the diacritics that we call wild, the ones that appear occasionally in uh, different genres. And we want to study their distribution, study their occurrences, and actually and answer the question of why they're used. And uh, in the second part, we want to uh, exploit these wild diacritics in order to improve the performance of our, our of our Arabic diacritization tools. So moving on to the statistics section. So in this section, we present two figures that wrap up basically um the statistics on wild diacritics uh, in a couple of different genres so you'll find here that we're dealing with eight different genres so the first two actually are reference data sets so we can use an atb or used by many papers in this field as uh, fully diacritized data sets and the second six data sets uh, are different are uh, a bunch of texts from different genres different writing styles so the first one is children books, the second one is poetry, then novels, then United Nations resolutions, and then news, and then finally ChatGPT 3.5 output. And this ChatGPT output, by the way, was not prompted to add any diacritics, but it still did include diacritics in the output that it produced. So as you can see here, obviously, that uh, the Wikinews and the ATB, the references have the highest uh, frequency of uh, diacritics, expect a higher number of diacritics for it to help the readers, which are which which the audience of which is usually people who are at the beginning of their Arabic proficiency journey, and therefore they need this help uh, in the form of diacritics. And then poetry, because poets would probably wouldn't want uh, their audience to misinterpret their poems, and then comes in novels, and then you'll find that the lowest frequency of wild diacritics is in UN resolutions and in news, uh, with like 1% to 2% of the words having wild diacritics. And then ChatGPT is like an average of all the other genres. And then if you look to the right, you'll find this is a basically a graph of the distribution of the different kinds of wild diacritics. And you'll find that if you just ignore the types for a second, children and poetry do follow a similar pattern to ATB and Wikinews. So they have a similar distribution. Uh, of the types of the kinds of wild diacritics. And then you'll find that novels, UN and news, they have a bit like a, actually a different pattern, but however it is in between them, it is kind of consistent in which they find that the green bars have exploded 
drastically. So the Tanween Fatah is very, very prominent in novels you and, and the news. And then oddly enough, you'll find that ChatGPT is following a pattern on its own that actually we, f- we found that it's uh, correlated to the average of all the other genres, but not to any one of the specific genres. And then moving on to the exploitation section. So on the figure on the left, we uh, present, first of all, the old model, basically the standard, the base, the base model in, uh, in black. So if you ignore all the red annotations for a second, so the, how, the, like the, the way that the old model works is that it takes an input sentence, it passes it to a morphological anal- analyzer and a morphological tagger. So the morphological analyzer using the morphological database generates all the possible analyses, so all the possible diacritizations for this specific word. And then the morphological tagger predicts the parse of speech and the morphological features from the sentence for each specific word. And then the ranker takes the, the, these, both of these information and then ranks the uh, analyses. And the top ranked analysis is basically the prediction of the model. So that's how the base model works. The way we extended this model is that we added three main things that are annotated in red in, uh, in, in the same figure. So first of all, we change the morphological analyzer and the database for it to match our our uh, standard for maximal diacritization more. So for example, we added some fat has that are missing uh, before ellipse and and other and other edits that are outlined uh, in a great detail in the paper. And we also uh, changed the algorithm for re-ranking for, for ranking in terms of now there is a as you can see there is an arrow going from the input sentence to the ranker. This basically depicts the fact that the ranker now is taking into account the wild diacritic signals from the input sentence when it ranks. So it basically re-ranks uh, the, uh, the, the, so the analyses that actually, the analyses that uh, match with the wild diacritic signal are ranked higher than the ones that are not. And this is not always like a simple match because sometimes wild diac- as we as we are gonna see in the error analysis, sometimes the wild diacritic signals are actually wrong, and sometimes they're placed on the wrong letter, like one letter before, one letter afterwards, and therefore there's some some normalization and some fuzzy matching had to be done. And then the last edit are contextual post editing, which are edits uh, for diacritics that change depending on the words before and the words after the current word. And the details of exactly how this happens is all done in the, it's all in the paper, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip that for now. And then in order to in order to demonstrate the improvement of this model, of our new extended model, we use uh, a custom made uh, data set of 6,000 6, words. So we picked random, a random 6,000 words that had wild diacritics from the six genres we spoke, uh, we, we talked about before. And we manually annotated them for full, for maximal diacritization, and then we used uh, we used basically uh, like one to one matching in order to uh, in order to evaluate our our different models. So we are using a very very strict uh, matching in terms of each each letter and each diacritic must match for for a word to be considered as a as as a, as a full match, and therefore. If you look at on the table, if you look at the table on the right, in the development section, uh, we did try a, a bunch of combinations of our of our, our of our edits, and we did found that the one that improved that basically performed the best uh, is the is the model that included all three edits that we added. So namely the uh, like the improvements in the analyzer, the ranker, and the contextual improvements with eighty eight point two percent of the words. Being uh ha- being fully matching with the with, with the uh, gold, we'll see that there a, a similar improvement is also presented in the uh, in the in the test, and we find in the bottom table we find an error analysis of basically the twelve percent that did not match. We found indeed that amongst these twelve percent that did not match, half of them were due to of missing were due to missing analysis, a quarter of them were were due to uh, errors from the morphological tagger. And the rest were either wrong input from the wild diacritics or uh, valid alternatives. So basically words that had multiple diacritizations that were all valid uh, in that specific context. And our model picked one, however, the manual annotation, the manual annotation picked another. And therefore, due to, therefore a mismatch happened. And there, there are occasional 
like one out of 10 of the errors were due to gold errors. Therefore, we have demonstrated how our model improved over the base model in uh, using in exploiting these wild diacritics in Arabic diacritization. And we really hope that uh, these modifications will be added to the public camel tools for them to be uh, used by the uh, public. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you all in the conference.